Hi, we are going to see the embryogenesis of from the first week to the fourth week. The reference I have taken it from Larson's Human Embryology and it is fourth edition. I have not anything added new. Whatever he says, Mr. Larson, Dr. Larson says that only it is present here. First, we will see from the ovulation what happens. Such an interesting story, the embryogenesis of first few weeks. We will start with the oocyte. Look at the oocyte. It is called primary oocyte. Initially, when you see the oocyte, it is lined by simple squamous cells. That is called primordial follicle. Then it becomes cuboidal. That is called as primary follicle. Then see, look at the layers, multiple layers. So, it is called as secondary follicle now. When you call this as secondary follicle, it means you should have some, can you see this, antrum. So, if antrum is there, that time it is called a secondary follicle. These cells are multiply see look at this it gets multiplied these cells are called as granulosa cells now what happens look at this the fluid is getting increased so what happens the antral cavity is becoming bigger bigger in size so what happens it pushes the oocyte towards the periphery now look at this the oocyte is uh, coming towards the periphery push towards the periphery and at before the time of ovulation what happens the first uh, meiotic division ends and the second meiotic division starts so the first meiotic division ends and you can see the secondary oocyte and the first polar body you can see the first polar body and that's all now what happens it's coming here towards the edge and this area becomes necrosed and it this area becomes thinned out and this oocyte is ruptured out you can see that that is called ovulation and ovulation the sperms look at the sperm it is getting entered entered into that and this thin lining outside is called the zona pellucida so the sperm penetrates the zona pellucida next what happens look at this this is the picture of the oocyte and the rim zona pellucida and then the cumulus cells cumulus cells of the, the granulosa cells the granulosa cells are called theca interna and theca externa externa which is a fibrous layer outer layer and these are all called internal cells which secretes estrogen and the next one you can see the cumulus cells cumulus cells means accumulated cells and uh, here if you see this is the cumulus cells this is called corona radiator this area it is called as corona radiator this is called accumulated cells cumulus oophorus it is called cumulus oophorus and the next one if you see now what happens the sperm has entered and you have the two cell stage four cell stage it is getting multiplied eight cell and the 16 cell cell stage is called as morula now what happens it gets multiplied now it has to enter into the uterine cavity now what happens the fluid is entering into that look at this the fluid enters into that 16 cell stage is called morula after that look at this all the cells are there inside that you have the fluid and uh, containing cavity that time the fluid enters into that that time it is called as blastocyst this is called blastocyst when the fluid is getting increased what happened the cells are accumulated towards one end this is called embryoblast rest of the cell lines the blastocyst cavity that is called as tropoblast this is called inner cell mass and this is called as outer cell mass inner cell mass is called embryoblast outer cell mass is called tropoblast so what happens next it is getting implanted into the uterine endometrium we will see what happens now at this you have the two in uh, the embryoblast and this is the outer tropoblast this is the blastocyst cavity and the embryoblast if you see look at this and this upper layer this is the outer one it is called as tropoblast the green color tropoblast layer this is the uterine lining how it is entering into the uterine lining this cells in the inner uh, cell layer it means embryoblast in future it will be transformed into embryo this area the blue color columnar cells it is called as epiblast and that yellow color cuboidal cells are called as hypoblast epiblast and hypoblast now what happens look at this this uh, tropoblastic cells are getting multiplied and becomes two layered and the inner one is called cytotropoblast the outer one pale green color is called as light green color is called as sensitive tropoblast and then what happens getting implanted in the uterine membrane it gets multiplied it is entering into that so look at this i told you know that the yellow color is called epiblast and the lower one is called as hypoblast now what happens 
the sensitive trophoblast cells are getting multiplied and even the cytotrophoblastic cells are encroaching into the sensitive trophoblast it is entering into the uterine endometrium look at this then small 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 spaces they get formed into the sensitive trophoblast these are called lacunae see trophoblastic lacunae what happens the uterine lining is there uterine glands and blood vessels are here the third next to this stage what happens see look at this the uteroplacental circulation is going to occur so the here in the embryoblast area you will be having a small cavity that is called as amniotic cavity and here already it is called as um, blastocyst now what happens from that yellow color thing that is from the hypoblast few cells are migrating and it is lining that that is called Hosen's membrane and this cavity it's a called now it is called as primary primary or primitive yolk sac understood so initially it was a blastocyst and cells are displaced one in the area now here is a cavity the form that is called amniotic cavity in the epiblast area and here this area is called as primitive yolk sac and from the hypoblast from the yellow color the cells are getting migrated and lines the primitive yolk sac that is called as Hussey's membrane and next the surrounding trophoblast is called as cytotrophoblast and the encroaching one into the uterine endometrium it is called as sensitive uh, trophoblast inside that you will be having the lacunae now look at this everything all the lacunae are entered and the uterine blood vessels are getting opened into the lacuna and uteroplacental circulation occurs and then next what happens look at this area immediately what happens from the again from the hypoblastic area few cells are migrating and it forms a new layer between the uh, primitive yolk sac and the outer trophoblast cytotrophoblast okay between these two new formation that is was called as extra embryonic mesoderm extra embryonic mesoderm now see look at this full of cement like substance that is mesoderm and suddenly inside the mesoderm also there is a cavity formation okay already this is called primitive yolk sac now the new cavity is formed that is called as chorionic cavity this cavity is becoming enlarged enlarged and enlarged and it surrounds the entire area except this is called embryonic disc except the area where the embryonic disc is attached to the uterine wall that is the area called connecting stock rest other areas are covered by the chorionic cavity so what happens entire area is covered by the chorionic cavity and only the thin membrane will be left out only this area where the, this is called embryonic disc embryonic disc is attached to the uterine endometrium that is the area that extra embryonic mesoderm is called as connecting stock because it connects so it is called as connecting stock next what happens look at this prime or something is called as primordial this is the yolk sac cavity the wall of the yolk sac cavity only you will be having the primordial germ cells the germ cells are very important for the urogenital system from here the some germ cells are migrating this is the mcq primordial germ cells are present in the wall of the yolk sac from here only the cells are getting migrated and it will be transformed into male and female gonad in the mesonephric and paramesonephric tract genital ridge look at this this will see in the uh, genital system and then next look at this the chorionic cavity is connected it surrounds the entire thing now again from the hypoblast cells are migrating down and they form a new cavity that is called secondary yolk sac or definitive yolk sac so what happens to this primary yolk sac it is getting degenerated look at this it is getting degenerated so this is called as definitive yolk sac it is the definite one and look at this chorionic cavity how big it is only in one area only you have the connecting stock rest all the extra embryonic mesonym is getting degenerated see look at this this area only one area only extra embryonic mesoderm is uh, holding the disc and it is connected to the uterine endometrium so this is the area called connector tether areas fully it is uh, tethered and only a rim of the extra embryonic mesoderm is here so see look at the lacunae and it is the blood is mixing up it is called uteroplacental circulation exists now this area the villi is encroaching so what is called primary villi see sensitive cytotropoblast this is the uterine line extra embryonic mesoderm and cytotropoblast and sensitive tropoblast this is the uterine endometrium this is the lining okay now second what happens again the same layers this is primary villus primary villus means cytotropoblast will be there sensitive tropoblast will be there and uterine endometrium will be there 
here what is the extra thing see look at this in this will i extra embryonic mesoderm is also entering here it is not entering only the cytotropoplast and syngotropoplast and uterine endometrium is there but here second secondary will i second this is the mcq primary will i will be having only two secondary will i you will be having cytotropoplast syngotropoplast along with the mesoderm see it is coming inside third tertiary will i means even the blood vessels are going inside okay that definitely blood vessels chorionic arteries and veins they are present that's why that is called as tertiary villi this will be asked pri what is primary villi what is secondary villi and what's the content of tertiary villi so content of tertiary villi what will you say syngotropoblast cytotropoblast along with the mesoderm with the blood vessels chorionic vessels then what happens look at this this is a connecting stalk and where the embryonic disc is attached to the uterine endometrium now what happens this layer i said it is epiblast and this layer is called hypoblast and what happens now the epiblast region there is a formation of a groove that is called primitive groove or streak both the sides all the cells from the epiblast they accumulate here and they get into that groove can you see this this is accumulation of cells in the cranial end this is the cranial end and this is the caudal end In the cranial end, the accumulation of cells they form the primitive node, and in the center you will be having a pit called primitive pit. And the cells from the epiblast they enter into this groove and they go down and forms a new layer that is called as mesoderm. Okay, look at this. And in the uh, and this uh, towards the cranial end, if you see, this is the primitive node, and below that, can you see some? Uh, flattened area that is called as future oropharyngeal membrane this means future oral cavity the caudal region also it is somewhat flattened region here we will not be having any in three layers the here this is a one which shows the formation of three layers initially we were talking about only two layers this is called bi laminar gem bi laminar means two layers here after we are going to see tri laminar how it is becoming tri laminar or three layer gem disc three layer gem disc is epiblastic cells they enter through the primitive uh, groove and goes inside beneath this and then forms a in between layer that is called mesoderm when it forms a new layer that outer one is called as I look at this from here the cells are entering can you see the cells are entering and they form a new layer in they displace the hypoblast layer and this is called as endoderm and the middle also they will form a new layer that is called mesoderm so the blue color indicates the outer one layer the epiblast will be transformed into ectoderm and the deep layer hypoblast will be transformed into endoderm yellow color and the new layer in the middle that is called as red color mesoderm so this is called three laminar three means uh, tri tri laminar germ disc formation otherwise called as gastrulation so when you write the short note about gastrulation you have to write initially the primitive streak second primitive node third primitive pit and the, through the primitive streak or groove the epiblast cells center and they displace the hypoblast and they form the new layer endoderm after that they enter into the middle and then they form a new layer mesoderm and the outer epiblast layer will be transformed into ectoderm so these are the layers in real embryo it will be like that only and then what happens the now three lamina germ disc has been formed now what is the role of the primitive pit and node through the primitive pit the cells again they enter towards cranially it goes towards cranial means towards the head end it goes already there is a flattened area already i said oropharyngeal membrane it will not go beyond that the, again the mesoderm the mesoderm stops up to this only beyond that there is a new formation that is called as notochord formation there is a process formation so epiblastic cells they dip into the primitive pit and they go cranially up to the oropharyngeal membrane and they form a new process called notochordal process what is that notochordal process they send signal to the upper above lying ectoderm and forms a neural tube and cns central nervous system so the notochord forms an at uh, axon axis and it sends signals to the ectoderm to for the formation of the cns central nervous system look at this notochordal process you can see beneath that the notochordal process forms an axis the uh, uh, surrounding area of the notochordal process only will be transformed into vertebral column and the vertebral muscles everything so it sends signal to the uh, ectoderm see look at this the notochord is here 
and then ecto endodem is here above that you will be having the ectoderm now what happens this notochord it sends signals and then that uh, upper part you will be having the fold formation i will show you the notochord will be disappearing okay completely only the remnant of the notochord you could see in the nucleus pulposus nucleus pulposus is present in the intervertebral disc it will be asked in mcq Nuc notochord is completely disappearing only the remnant of the notochord you can see it in the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc so if you see the intervertebral disc you will be having oh, one uh, inner layer and outer layer full fibrous layer that is called annular fibrosis the center jelly like substance will be there that is called as nucleus pulposus that is the remnant of the notochord so look at this and this nice picture explains you okay this is the groove okay and inside that you will be having the notochordal process both the sides uh, and ectoderm it forms a fold that is called as neural fold look at the neural fold this is the neural plate and then this is the flow this fold has to be fused then only your spinal cord and the brain everything will be formed this is the group primitive group can you see this primitive group primitive streak okay cranial to that from here only cells are entering down and they form the notochord notochord send signal in the ectoderm and the ectoderm will be transformed into the the part or so just above the notochord will be transformed into the central nervous system so this is called neural tube and both the sides you will be having the um, skin can you see that beyond this you can see the area you have the ectodermal derivatives are skin hair nail everything so you can see the skin okay next you can see see look at the fold this is the fold can you see this neural ectoderm and this is the endoderm and you can see the neural tube here nicely the neural tube is formed the folds two ends of the folds they join together and forms the neural tube this two ends they join together and this is a section they form the fold can you see this separated out and this is called as neural tube so here you nicely in the neural tube is closed and both the sides of the neural tube you have the uh, mesoderm the mesoderm will be differentiated into somites from this somites only you will be having the muscles and the vertebrae everything is being formed this mesoderm just adjacent to the neural tube is called paroxial mesoderm that will be differentiated into somites that will be differentiated into vertebral body and the muscles around the vertebral column next to that it is called intermediate mesoderm that will be transformed into urogenital system and next lateral plate mesoderm will be transformed into um, blood vessels all the cavities everything heart everything is developed from the lateral plate mesoderm right so this is the skin ectoderm so ectoderm we have um, separated i mean we have uh, taken out the ectoderm and you can see this is the mesoderm beneath that only you will be having the endoderm nicely seen this is a real picture okay real embryonic picture so you can see the neural tube in the middle and here is a formation of the uh, all the layers okay this is the amniotic cavity this is the primitive yolk sac and here is the notochord this is the paroxial mesoderm, intermediate mesoderm and the lateral plate mesoderm. See, look at the lateral plate mesoderm. It surrounds the yolk sac cavity and then upper part it surrounds the amniotic cavity. So, this area it is called as planktonic mesoderm and this area it is called somatic mesoderm. Somatic means body wall. Planktonic means um, all body viscera. Viscera means all the organs. So, it here you can call somatic mesoderm and splanking mesoderm. So, the lateral plate mesoderm only it is differentiated into two parts. Look at this. And next layer, look at this picture. What happens? See, nothing is formed. You are, both the lower limbs are fused. What could be the reason? The gastrulation I said, no, trilaminar germ disc. That area, mesoderm is not well developed and not distributed properly in the lower areas that's why your lower limbs are not well developed see look at this this picture is called serenomyelia okay look at this very pretty no the child looks very pretty but look at the face because of the gastrulation defect okay next is the look at the neural folds the neural folds they should 
fuse properly if they don't fuse properly at the cranial end what would have happened the cranial cavity will not be closed that is called anencephaly and caudal end if it is not closed that will lead to um, uh, so many uh, spinal cord uh, abnormalities that is spina bifida occulta it means that only everything will be closed i will show you the picture water association what is that water association all the anomalies will be there and uh, tracheoesophageal fistula respiratory difficulty all this imperforate anus everything will be associated with this gastrulation and this is acrococcygeal is teratoma why it occurs the primitive streak we saw no the primitive streak should disappear completely if it doesn't disappear the streak should disappear completely if it doesn't disappear the caudal end accumulation of cells leads to this abnormality is acrococcygeal teratoma and then the neural tube development already i explained see in the neural folds in the ectoderm see look at the fold the fold is getting depressed depressed and they form a nice groove can you see this here you will be having neural crest cells and the both the sides crest cells this is the groove and look at this now groove is becoming a rounded structure and it got separated and the upper area should get fused so this is your neural tube formation neural groove everything should go properly otherwise some abnormalities may occur neural crest cells these are the cells present over here that neural crest cells will be transformed into skin uh, over the face and the cranial cava vault and then the bone of the cranial vaults and cartilages of the face and bone and then the, um, and all the sympathetic system dorsal root ganglion and sympathetic ganglion peripheral ganglion everything is derived from here adrenal medulla and the heart you have the corners part of the heart and the c cells of the thyroid gland everything and odontoblasts of the teeth everything is derived from the neural crest especially adrenal medulla you should write and um, all the ganglion sympathetic ganglion other structures you should write for this and then anomalies of the neural tube if the neural tube doesn't close what are the structures you can see this is called meningocele meningomyelocele so look at this this area is not yet fused so it is opened it is called the spina bifida Spi spina bifida you can see only the see look at this one everything is fused but look at this tuft of hair will be there okay it means opened channel not yet fully closed it means something is uh, there beneath that not yet fully closed so this is called spina bifida occulta occulta means hidden it is there something is there it is indicated by tuft of hair in the lower part of the spinal column and then here you can see meningo myelocele both meninges dura mater arachna mater pia mater along with the uh, brain structures of the spinal uh, spinal cord is coming out here only meningocele only the meninges are coming out dura four dura mater is coming out see so the three different areas are there last we have come to the folding of the embryo what is that so far the embryo is like a plate now it has become uh, because of the development of the cns central nervous system this area the cranial end of the embryonic disc is becoming folded before if you see that uh, few septum transverse and future uh, diaphragm is cranial to that and you can see the lateral plate mesoderm area the heart is getting developed can you see this is the heart getting developed in this area and now it starts folding initially it was here then when it started folding the head end is going down and the heart is going inside look at this it enters into the thoracic cavity when there is a folding of the cranial end as well as in the caudal end because of the development of what the central nervous system and the no structures uh, paraxial mesoderm everything it means the vertebral column development of the vertebral column leads to cranio caudal axis folding when this folding occurs the heart is entering inside and look at this this amniotic cavity is becoming enlarged so it is coming down both the sides this is the connecting stalk and here you can have the yolk sac cavity and here is the area the entire this is endoderm right so the exa cavity is getting narrowed down 
at the same time not only craniocaudal folding occurs because of the development of the vertebral column lateral folding also occurs so the embryo is not only folded craniocaudally it folds like this craniocaudal not only folded like this it also folded like both the sides lateral folding also occurs laterally it is folding then only it will become a cylindrical structure so what happens look at this lateral folding occurs so it constricts narrow down the yolk sac cavity look at this narrow down so only the connection exists here it is called as vitello intestinal duct now what happens the endoderm will be differentiated into foregut and midgut and the posterior one is called hindgut here only you have the allantois is here so because of the narrowing this connecting stalk is coming towards this side along with the allantois and the vitello intestinal duct so this entire ring like structure is called umbilical cord this is called umbilical cord so in the umbilical cord you can see this vitello intestinal tract as the tract and then uh, allantois along with the blood vessels umbilical vessels are there in the connecting stalk right see this is the pericardial cavity and here is a foregut now foregut already i said the oropharyngeal membrane and the cloacal membrane so oropharyngeal membrane is closed Mm, this is the future oral cavity this is your foregut between that only your oropharyngeal membrane is there so when the membrane gets ruptured at the age of four week fourth week of intrauterine life it is communicated with the oral cavity like that the cloacal membrane will also be ruptured at the seventh week understood ah, this is about the amniotic cavity in neural tube and this is the endoderm and this is the mesoderm this is how the folding occurs lateral folding and look at this can you see the yolk sac it is entering inside so that's all about the folding so in the lateral folding is an interesting thing happening at the fourth week last we have reached the fourth week so far everything goes fine if the folding is not proper what would have happened see all the cavities you have the mesoderm covering the this area and mesoderm covering the uh, amniotic cavity it is called uh, somatic mesoderm and this is called splanchnic mesoderm so all of thing they form a new new cavities see look at this intraembryonic coelom so here there is a formation of coelom means again cavity intraembryo inside the embryo because of the folding you have a cavity so all of them they form a new cavities new body wall cylindrical body wall if this, there is any abnormality that is called as hmm, pentology of candrel so what are the things happens because the abdominal wall is not yet formed and then sternum is not yet formed the diaphragmatic hernia occurs so these are the structures they form okay so uh, incomplete fusion of the anterior abdominal wall because of the folding so if the folding gets completed then only the endoderm everything will be coming anteriorly then only the endoderm will come and close the anterior abdominal wall so if this not happened the anterior abdominal wall defect will be there inside that diaphragm if it is not uh, fused properly and then hernia occurs and then sternum if it is not fused you will be having cleft sternum and then inside that wall also you will be having cardiac abnormalities so everything co uh, contributes to the pentology of cantrel so this is one the part one embryo embryogenesis of first week to fourth week thank you